Hello everybody, thank you for joining me again in Make and Do with June, and we are going to finish this picture. This is the parrotfish from the underwater world of Jane F. Hankins, and a link to her books will be down below. I did the background using pen pastels and a stencil, and now I'm going to color them with Prismacolors. I will add a link below to the video of the background, and also provide a list of the colors that I use on this parrotfish. I'm starting off with orange, and the name of the color is orange on the pencil. I'm also using ginger root, Tuscan red, crimson lake, crimson red, and carmine red. Then I have a sunburst yellow in there as well. So as I color the top of this, I started off with orange, added uh, the next shade closest to orange in the red, and I will continually get darker as I go down the back of the head. I'll then color in the belly of the bird and then the ends of his tail or her tail. I used a reference picture of a rainbow parrot that I got off the internet and you can see my little cheat sheet off to the right on a yellow sticky note. I drew the sections of the parrot and what color they were and then decided that I was going to color this parrotfish like a rainbow parrot. If you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell down below so that you get notifications whenever I post a new video. I'm planning to do them every Tuesday and Thursday, and I would love to have you join in and comment down below. Let me know what you want to see. If there's a question, I will definitely answer that. I will read all the messages, and I appreciate any comments that you have. Moving on to a darker red, I'm going to go around the outside edges and darken them in just to add some dimension to the different shapes on this parrotfish. Now this video is sped up a little bit. Um, you can always pause it, rewind it, and watch it again if I'm going too fast for you so that you, if you're coloring along, you can get caught up. Now moving on to the darkest shade of red, I'm going to go around all the outside edges again. And if you notice where there is cross hatching or dark places in the drawing, that is where Jane intended there to be shadows. So I usually go over those with the pencils in the darker shades. And then I also went around just the tips of the feathers to make them stand out a little bit more. Okay, just finishing up this red, and then I'm going to move on to the beak. This is ginger root, the color that I'm using. Beaks on a parrot are normally white, but I didn't want the stark white of the paper, so I'm using this off-white just to add a little dimension to it and not make it look as bold as plain white. I'm going to go in and add a little bit of yellow later. Also around the parrot's face is black. The cheeks are often white as well, but I didn't want to leave them white. I end up coloring it yellow, as you'll see in a little bit. So first I go over the black areas just lightly, and then I go and fill in a little bit heavier just by using more pressure on the pencil as I go around the face. And I have to give him a little green eye. I start off with a lighter green, then go into a darker green, and I go around the inside and then the very outside edge. Now I'm going to add the green that I was just using on the eyes to the wings, and I go over with the lightest green first. And just go over it quickly. Then I add highlights to the edge and around the feathers with a darker green. 
And these two greens are apple green and spring green. And the darkest green is uh, olive green. And again, I'll list the colors down below. Uh, using the olive green to shade the feathers, I go around the bottom edges and then just around the tips of each of the feathers to add a little more dimension to the feathers so that they don't look like they're all just one color. Adding different shades of a similar color add more interest to the design, so that's what I'm doing here. But adding a little bit of shading as separation to the feathers. Okay, now on to the yellow. I'm going to color with the lightest yellow first. Just coloring all over one coat everywhere. All the way down to the tips. Then next, the medium orange, and I go around the edges again, and then fill in around some of the feathers, highlighting a few here and there. As I go around, um, I also try to hit the spots that I didn't color in completely previously. Uh, you'll see a few almost white spots or light spots, and I go in that a little bit heavier. Also doing the same thing to the tips of the feathers on the wing and just a little bit of touch up here and there. If you start with your lightest color and then go darker, you'll notice uh, that your shading techniques improve as you practice it. Uh, you could go back in with a gray if you wanted more darker shades. Um, sometimes a blue will work. You kind of need to just try out different colors. And as you practice your coloring, it will improve and enjoy the process. It's a lot of fun. There is no right or wrong way to do this. If you're having fun, then you're doing it right. I went over the orange with a little bit of yellow just to brighten it up a bit. And then I went back over the yellow with a little bit of orange just to add a little more depth in between the feathers. A little more interest to the coloring. And then outlining those layers in the wings. And a little bit more on the tips because the way that they're laying, they would be a little bit darker. Then I went over the red on the belly and with the orange just to blend those colors in. You'll find that uh, the more colors that you layer in the same color family, just getting darker, really works well to make your uh, colorings pop. Okay, just finishing off the tips of the wings, adding a little bit of that really dark red, and then going back with the olive green, adding a little bit of that to the tips of the wings. And that indicates where the feathers blend together. And then I realized that, hey, I have to color the underside of the wing on the other arm. And so I went in and colored the green and highlighted with the olive green again. and then blending a little bit into the yellow where the feathers come together. Now I'm adding the blue to the bottom part and I start with this um, almost a sky blue. It is uh, actually called true blue. I decided that I was going to continue down with the blue on this portion of the tail. I could have chosen to do another color. Not sure why I didn't. I just felt that I wanted a little bit more blue in the parrotfish. So here I am with the next shade darker, 
highlighting in around parts of the tail. I'm leaving the center of the tail a little bit lighter just so it looks like there's a little bit of shine and curve to his tail or her tail. Uh, now this color that I'm adding to the second portion of the tail is an ultramarine blue and it has a little bit more purple tinge to it and it helps separate it from the portion of the tail above it and adds a little more interest to that. I felt like that was a softer um, design to the tail instead of the scales so I wanted it to look just a little bit different. So now the last portion of the tail, I'm going to color green and I grab my two greens, the, starting with the light one first, going over the entire area. And I realized that I missed a little tiny portion of red right behind the corner there. Now I go over the green with the next shade darker, filling in around the lines, around the edges, making it look like that is a little bit of separation between the feathers. So there's actually two portions that are supposed to be red that I missed, and I hope that wasn't driving everybody crazy, but I will get back to it. And a little bit of touch up around the edges with the darkest green, the olive green. Coloring in the tips where Jane has placed cross hatching to show where it's supposed to be a little bit darker. I think I like that. So now I gotta go in and make my corrections to what I missed. So going back in with the one red and then the darker red to add some of the highlights, the actually their low lights when you go darker. And that gives me an opportunity to go in and hit anything that I missed around the tail. And then I did color the little dots in with black and then re-outlined the lines just to show some definition. And the very tips of the tail feathers are all black, so I colored those in and there's that last little piece of red. I don't know how I missed that, but that happens. Color in some more dots. Kind of felt that looked like a watermelon, though I'm sure that's not what Jane intended. Then I add some little highlights around with uh, just light touch of black. Then I tip the ends with the darkest green, the olive green. Then I use the black to shade around that again. I had thought about coloring that all black, just coloring it in, but I felt that um, making it the darker green was probably a better choice. But you can always do whatever you want. Who knows, maybe your parrot would be, I don't know, pink and purple and red. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I would love to see what you do. You can always post your pictures on the Imaginary World of Jane F. Hankins on Facebook. We love to see the pictures there. Everybody does. And that is a great place to share what you color in. 
So I'm doing the top of the head orange, and then I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of yellow to brighten it up and fill in the spaces. I love yellow for highlighting oranges and reds and greens. If you color on top of blue, it will turn a little bit green, but for uh, reds and greens, it's, it's a great highlighter. Just makes those colors pop even more. And just a little bit of shading with a darker red. Just defining, giving some shape to the edges. Then I started to color in the cheek with the same color as the beak and decided that that was a little bit boring. So I went for yellow. You've got a nice round cheek. On any of the other characters, that would have been pink because I love pink rosy cheeks. But in this case, he got a, a orangey cheek, yellowy orange cheek, but I thought it turned out cute. Then I added the highlights that I talked about earlier to the beak just to add some depth to it, some shape. I wanted it to look nice and round. Now this is a Prisma color uh, blending pen and I used it with some green earlier so I wanted to make sure that I cleaned it off. Always, always check your blending pens because you don't want to transfer any of that color into places you don't want. So I'm going over and it's just blending the colors together really nicely. Prismacolors are a wax based pencil and these blending pens dissolve the wax a little bit and cause it to blend together. It also has a tendency to make the colors really pop. And I like that because the colors look bright and clean and you don't, you, it kind of gets rid of all that sketchiness. Some people like the sketchiness. Um, and I'll leave it on some pictures, and then other pictures I will go over it with the blending pen. There are also blending pencils out there that work in kind of the same way. Uh, I've heard of people that use a white pencil as their blending pencil as well. Um, you could try all kinds of different things. I prefer this one. Uh, I have another one that's kind of the same uh, Makeup, I guess, it is whatever the fluid is on the inside does the same exact thing. And they work on the wax-based pencils. The oil-based pencils, I think they would also work, but I haven't tried it. There are some people who use an orange oil or citrus oil to blend with. But whenever I've done that, I've found that it soaks through the paper a little bit too much. And it's not as easy to use as this pen. Because this pen, you just go over it like you were coloring on top. Because that's exactly what I'm doing. But it just really makes those colors pop. And you'll notice that I start with the lightest color first. And go over all of that, ending with black at the end. And that is just so I don't transfer a lot of the color. But always clean off the pen tip in between. Have a scrap piece of paper. I always have a scrap piece of paper next to me so that I can try out colors, clean off the pen, as you can see in this case, off to the left. Just removing the excess color before I go in and touch up in more places. But you'll notice here, especially the red just really pops once I go over it with this pen. Okay, now I'm going to touch up the bubbles with this coarse white pearl pan pastel. It does not come in the set. You need to order it separately. And there are different uh, textures of the white pearl. There's coarse, medium, and fine. And I just like the coarse. It uh, just adds a little bit, almost a glitter, but more just a, a, a pearlescence to it. It's uh, shiny, but not overdone. 
even though I am one that likes a lot of bling. So now I'm coloring the coral cookies and I decided they needed to be like a coral red. So that's what I'm doing. I go over all of it first with a light covering of the pencil, not a lot of pressure on it. Then I go back with just a little bit more pressure, same color pencil, and do all the areas where there are black lines because that indicates shadows. So I'm gonna go through all that. You'll see it skip ahead. You can always pause it to finish coloring yours in. But I did the coral all with the same pencil. And then I'm going over it with the blending pen. And I just love how this pen makes those colors stand out, blend together. They're just a little bit brighter after you use the pen. So now I'm going to finish up some of the plants down below. Coloring in the leaves. I almost always use at least two colors of green on every leaf that I color. I'll come in and I'll color the other side of the coral cookies in just a moment. So I used a medium green, now I'm going in with the darker green, the olive green. I believe I used spring green and olive green on these leaves. And you don't have to use Prismas, use whatever you have. When I started coloring, I was using just Crayolas, and you know what, they work great. It's up to you. There are so many different pencils out there. It's whatever you can afford, whatever is comfortable for you. Making the little fish down below yellow, just so they stand out. They look like they're happy to see the parrotfish. Or maybe they're waiting to get some of those cookies. Who knows? Highlight it with a little bit of orange. Just adds interest to them. Coral in real life is almost white. Um, there are different colors of it, but once it's dried, it is almost this ginger root color that I'm using here. But I wanted it to look different than the coral cookies. So I'm filling it in with just this off-white shade. Kind of a tan. And I found once I got to the top parts of this coral that um, the green and the pan pastels that I used for the background, the green and the blues, actually worked really well on how I ended up coloring it. Now I'm using a little bit of green to shade in. And like I'd mentioned earlier, uh, you don't have to use black. I could have used black, but I just felt, you know, it's in the ocean, it's in the water. 
There tends to be green algae growing on things. That was my way of thinking. But again, you could do whatever you like. You could make the coral bright red if you wanted. So what I'm looking for is all the black lines and I'm going over them with the green because that's my shadow. Highlighting the rocks down below. I just love how this picture turned out. I just think it's just so bright and vibrant and fun. And Jane's drawings always make me smile. Her whimsical ideas, I don't know where she comes up with them, but she is extremely creative. And you can't look at her artwork without smiling. You just can't. So a little more touch up on the rocks. Can't forget the little guy in the corner, but I'm gonna color in with a little bit darker green because these are more shaded, more in the shade. So I'm gonna go around a little bit here. And this is how I color just about everything. I start off light and gradually get darker. And then if it's not showing enough dimension, then I'll go another shade darker. I rarely ever jump right to black or gray, unless it's a blue or something in that tone. Now I'm going to use the blending pen to get rid of those lines. Blend those colors all together. Smooth off the rocks. Now this pen does have two ends to it. One is a more fine tip point. Now I'm gonna finish up the coral cookies really quick. I'm gonna jump ahead on this. Go around with a little uh, more pressure on the pencil to color in those shaded areas. Okay, now I gotta get that little guy. I didn't wanna forget him. Hanging out there behind watching what's going on. So I started off with orange Colored him in orange.
Then I'm going to add some highlights, some shadows, some shading with this darker red, but just around the edges, just the darker areas. And then yellow, always yellow. Just brings it all together. Looks kind of dull until I cover them up with yellow. Then I realized that there were a few little spots that I hadn't highlighted, that I hadn't even colored in, going over some of these edges with black and dark green. Adding some more highlights to the fish inside. And then gotta color the little guy's eye. And just adding some edges to the coral, just to give it a little more definition against the other colors. You just gotta wonder what those little guys are thinking as they're looking up there. So this is the white Posca pen, and I'm adding white dots to the coral cookies. I thought about making them um, black or red or even brown, like a chocolate chip cookie, but I ended up with white. You can, again, you know, the choice is yours whatever strikes your fancy as you're doing it. And lastly, this little piece of, I guess it's more coral. I decided that it was going to be an orangey or coral because I wanted to balance out the colors in the picture. I always look at a picture and I think, um, do these colors balance? Are they heavier on one side than the other? You know, how does the overall picture look? And now I'm just going to go in for little touch-ups here and there, and my picture will be finished. And I have to say, I really love this parrotfish. I'm very happy with how he turned out. If you liked this video, it would really help me if you hit the like button, the thumbs up, and also subscribing so that you can get the future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.